evening. Welcome to our first episode of the Wednesday Night Photo Show, our little live chat to talk about photography and uh, go over some stuff and just generally socialize and hang out. Uh, my name's Scott. I'm the main photo instructor here at Dan's. I'm here tonight with Mike. You want to introduce yourself? Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Scott. I'm Mike Wither, one of the co-owners of Dan's Camera City. Very happy to be here this evening. Thank you for joining us. All right. And tonight, uh, we're going to kick things off with uh, the winners of our winter Facebook photo contest. Uh, we had a photo contest running on Facebook, and we got a ton of great pictures. Um, if any of you have had a chance to look at them, we just saw a bunch of great stuff. Uh, it was really tough to pick winners, but we had two different prize categories. We had the people's choice and then the judges pick. So uh, let's just get right into it. The prize that we're giving away is some of our photo gloves, kind of fitting for our winter photography theme here. Um, photo gloves are, I actually just dug into my parka and got my own out here. They're uh, nice heavy gloves, but they've got these great little thingies on them that kind of pull back so you can deal with like the buttons and knobs and stuff on your camera. All right, I can pop this one back, pop this one back, and I can deal with all my stuff uh, without freezing the rest of my hands. I really like these things. Um, they just kind of live in my parka all winter because like I wind up using them for my phone and stuff. I don't know, Mike, do you have a pair of these guys? I do, the unofficial, like you said, Scott, because you can access your devices, which we're all carrying around all the time, and yet you can, in just a second, cover back up. So very, very beneficial to have. Yeah. So um, yeah, let's get into the pictures. We'll take a look at these things. So first off, I want to start off with our People's Choice winner was this great shot from Anna. Uh, I'm gonna go over her comments here. Uh, taking Storm at Sunrise. Um, man, this is a cool shot. This is one of those that's like the real, the benefit of like getting out there at the right time of day, right? I always tell people like grab your camera when the weather gets weird, right? You can see all these storm clouds kind of rolling in. There's this fog on the lake. And that benefit of using that wide angle lens, we've got everything from the little pebbles here on the beach. Everything's yeah, pretty in focus. easy to see why that was the. Yeah. So congratulations, Anna. You're going to be easy getting to see why I've garnered as many votes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So congratulations. Uh, you're going to be getting a pair of the gloves. We've got uh, how many different styles of these things do we have? Uh, I think it's like four different variations. So depending upon your preference, there'll be some choices for you. Cool. Yeah, I use the uh, the heavier duty ones. And uh, yeah, nice. All right, so cool. Let's take a look at a bunch of, uh, we got so many great photos and our judges had a tough time picking. But we're gonna go ahead and just take a look at some of the other pictures we got. If you've got comments, if you've got questions, go ahead and throw them in the show. Oh, good. I just saw that Anna's here and watching and uh, found out that she's won. So yeah, cool. We'll get you some, uh, some new photo gloves. Awesome. So let's take a look. We can keep on going here. Nice, nice winter theme here. Nice getting out there in that weather, All right? Like this is another one, like get out there when the weather is weird because it's a real benefit to like, you know, actually having that atmosphere in here. The only thing I might do a little differently in this one is maybe come in from the side. I'm seeing a little bit of like, all the composition seems to be here, right? And the top and the right are kind of, maybe just bring that crop in just a touch. Okay. I don't know, something like that. Oh, hey, buddy's here in the chat I too. Like the, the use of the I like the use of the leading lines. Always good to see. Yeah. Yeah, and the way that the, the house is kind of framed in between the the uh, the posts there. Right? It's just kind of that nice element that's kind of framed and at that spot. Maybe just like take a little bit of a step so that you don't clip the corner of the house with this edge of the fence post. But very nice. I'm a sucker for those old Pennsylvania stone farmhouses. Hey, we got some horses out in the snow. This is a this is the cheat category. Like animals out in the snow was are the ones that I always want to vote for. Um, 
Yeah. Nice job of getting in there and filling the frame. I would just watch maybe the horizon here is a little bit off. Can be kind of tough when you're out in the field. That might be something you have to crop after the fact. And I like seeing the, like we got the horses and then you've got the people back here in the background. Neat. Very nice. Yeah. <laughs> I like this. I'm not, I normally tell people not to go with like a dead center composition, but the geometry here, it just works out really well. The circle inside the square. Nice yeah. job with that one. Yeah, I think this one clearly falls into that. There's rules in photography and rules are meant to be broken. And this is a very deliberate use of that breaking. It works very well. It draws you in. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Where is this? Who is this guy? Like, there's a, there's a story here that I want to hear. It's true. It almost seems like he could have done a... a a series of shots about whatever was going on in this case. Yeah. I don't know. I was just, I remember one day I was out, like we'd gotten a big snow in Bethlehem and some Santa Claus came around this corner and literally a one horse open sleigh. And I just had two seconds to try and get a picture, but nice being quick on the draw to get that. Again, I might crop just a little tighter, right? Like the top and the right could probably come in a little bit. Nice action shot that really kind of sets the mood here, though. Holy moly. Oh, wow. You got to be a helicopter for this, right? That's a very cool picture. Not very a lot dramatic. of people able to get that. Yeah. Kind of tough to get that perspective. And with the snow in the park down here, and this, I love this like real clear dividing line of exactly where the ceiling is, where those clouds are. Tina asks, any more photo contests coming up? Um, I don't know, what do you think? Absolutely, stay tuned. Yeah. This is where we'll I be think talking this about it. I'd love to do more of these. Neat, neat photo. Hmm. This was one a couple of our judges really liked. And I like this one a lot too. Yeah, I kind imagine of, kind of back to timing is everything there, huh? <laughs> Absolutely. Excellent job, Carol. This is really nice. I love it just kind of framed in this little nook right here. This is a really nice landscape. I love this one. Yeah, again, very, very nicely done. Yeah. Leading lines for the tracks coming in. Yeah, yeah, the lines that pull you right back in here. Yep. Yep. The two little people down here, the lines all in the sky that kind of pull you back in this way. Hopefully, yeah, I can't come up with it. Yeah, hopefully that's printed out and on your wall somewhere. Yeah, no kidding. Well, I don't know what I would do differently with that one. That's pretty much nailed it. Very nice job, Holly. This was one that a couple of our judges liked too. Jane Stevens, Jane, I hope you're watching me because I know we've met up on a couple of trips and outings. There's just so much detail going on here. So many layers, not to the point that it's distracting or too busy, but there's just a whole lot of depth to this one. Yeah. Yeah, and I was surprised at the, the, the relatively few number of black and whites we receive because I think certainly some of these scenes where you have that snow in there lend to really the dramatic look you can get from black. And oh white. yeah, yeah. Good and this this captures it, this captures it very well. I mean, at least on my screen, I see a very good range from you know some good blacks. Uh, we don't have really blown out highlights, which is good, but we certainly have some whites and nice tones in between. Oh hey, Jane is here. Nice job. Yep, shots like this are always kind of one of my favorites. You get those bright red berries that contrast so strongly with the background. Yep, and just a touch of snow, which is nice. Yep, yep. That's the, the rule of thirds working for you here. I, I like the selective focus too. We've got just enough focus to pick up the detail in the leaves and the shiny surface of the berry here, and then it kind of falls off so that we're not distracted by this stuff back here. 
Yep. Yeah, tons of great images for sure. You guys did fantastic out here this time. Like, we got so many great. There are 94 entries in this photo contest. And man, there are a lot of real, just spe spectacular images in here. This is cool. There's some kind of funny post processing on here. It's really working to create a sense of motion in that, uh, in all that snow. Nice job, Joan. Yeah, I couldn't tell if it was really just a good job of dragging the shutter, because uh, obviously it looks like an available light, probably in a driveway with a single light, uh, and you know, good timing-wise again that you can clearly tell what the subject is, but you have the ground fully covered by the snow and, and the appearance of it still coming down. Yeah. Um, and it, it, it again, it, it's using the rule of thirds well. It's kind of um, doing something I don't, I don't think I would have thought to do, which is to position the car coming out of the frame that way. But I like the way it, you, you kind of are drawn to that blackness off to the right. I, I think it's very nicely executed. Yeah, absolutely. Hi, guys. Hi, Kathleen. <laughs> Thanks for joining us tonight. Shot from Ronnie out. Yep. Pretty nice snowy landscape out here. I love being out here at this time of day. You get that early morning light and it's still got a little warmth to it that contrasts against the cool. Yeah. Very I I do is... almost like a What's that? Go ahead, Scott. It's, it's almost like a oh, calendar. Gonna... Yeah. Yeah. Would maybe Photoshop out like the little hose that's sticking out. Like this one little bit distracts me a little bit, but other than that, yeah, nice use of negative space for sure. Hello, buddy. <laughs> yep, that's another one of those cheat categories. Dogs in snow are gonna get votes, probably from me. Uh, <laughs> and little kids. Yep. I, I actually really like, normally I try to retain a lot of detail in the snow, but I like the way everything just kind of fades out into nothing. And they're yeah. just kind of isolated. Yeah, that, that, yep. that's very, very well executed. I mean, you have, a, it really draws you into the subject. It draws you into their interaction uh, with noses almost touching. And of course, you know, the adorable hat framing the kid's face, um, you know, just very nicely done. Yeah. Mm. Ooh, another one of those black and whites. Good contrast. And I kind of like that we haven't gone like totally white with the snow. We get a sense of it being kind of dark and like maybe this is later in the day or it's still snowing or something going on here, a little stormy. Yeah, and this was captured at that time of day that works well with snow and black and white because you don't have a strong uh, sunlight source, it is blowing out some of the uh, snow on you, which could be distracting because you know, your eyes always drawn to the to, to really bright areas of the photo. And here with that mostly being in the middle and you have the fence giving you some framing and some foreground, um, you know, very nicely done. The only thing I'm curious about when I see this image is what's just off to the right of it. You know, might it have worked like have a, the L of the fence? Assuming, yeah, assuming it is an L there. It might mm -hmm. have worked to kind of wrap you back around, but it's still very nicely done, very extremely well exposed for a situation a lot of cameras wouldn't handle well. Yeah. Yeah, but I see a bit like, I just want a little bit more breathing room over here. Yeah. What am I, oh. is this a beaver dam? It would appear. Or a beaver lodge, is that what they call them? I guess so. <laughs> I don't think I've like seen one in person. That's a kind of a neat thing to see. Again, timing's good with the little bit of snow on it. You have some layers going on with the foreground, the beaver lodge, den, mm -hmm. hut, whatever. <laughs> and then back to you know, the reeds and yeah, back to the reeds of, of you know the wintry looking. Mm hmm Got a little bit of reflection going on in the ice here. Mm -hmm. Just watch that horizon, it's just a little bit off. Beaver Dam, Beaver Hut, Beaver, Beaver Dam. We'll go with that. So, someone will correct us in the chat, which is good. And there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Tia. Nice catching that time of day, getting that warm light, 
shining in there? Yeah, I think here I see, and it's you know hard to look back, but I wonder if there's a little bit of lens flare. I mm -hmm. almost want to see it more. You know, what I mean, it, it kind of teases you a little bit, and obviously, depending upon the angles of everything like over here, and your lens, yeah, like I yeah. almost wonder if you had gotten just a little more pop to the flare or to the glare. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, sorry, flare. You know, would that have? Give you even a little more drama to it. The long shadows certainly uh, start yeah. that, and I think if you'd gotten a, a little more, you, know, you usually try to avoid it, right? Um, but I think a little more there, combined with those long shadows, might have really kind of pumped that up. But certainly, very nicely done. Yeah. The other, I think we've got. This looks like it might have been taken inside. I think I'm seeing some window reflection here. Oh, okay, maybe because I couldn't tell if that was also yeah, going on there. Yeah, I mean the flare over here, I like, and I would, I agree with you. Like, yeah, I could see more of it, like mm -hmm. kind of light streaming out of there. Wash that reflection. If there's a, uh, there's a reflection there, just get that lens like right up against the glass, so you don't get a chance to get. And sometimes I'll take, like, if I'm taking a picture through glass, maybe like pull my hoodie up or something to kind of block out reflections from around the room. Never quite pictured you in a hoodie. <laughs> Hoodie, parka, whatever, you know. Oh. I have cloak, Jedi robe. That sound better? There you go. <laughs> yep, I like that. I like the, uh, normally we tell people, okay, get down on pet's eye level, right? You know, get down on your dog's eye level and photograph them from there. But I'd like this, like looking up expectantly, expectantly, like we're going to go out and play. What's going on? Why are we still up here? Yeah, again, it's, this this one also kind of has a story to it. You can tell because the, I like the the feet print in the foregrounds that show this guy is kind of raring to go. He's like out there getting himself ready to go. And I, I like how it happened that the snow is not right in that almost heart shape that his face forms. You, know, you kind of see it sprinkle oh, yeah. the rest of his coat. But boy, right, it helps right him to here. really. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Maybe allow a little room up here. We've kind of cropped the tail off just a little bit. And I would like to see like either crop closer and getting closer on the dog here or allow enough room that we don't quite crop that. Yeah, I think it'd be good if it was all or nothing. Like you said, either come down, you see no tail or get all the tail. <laughs> nice nice shot of your uh the snowman out there i like the background right it's like just sharp enough that we can see you got all the bear trees back there so we're kind of out in the woods kind of sets the place and compositionally it follows everything we're saying you know uh, our yep. fellows following rule of thirds he's looking into the frame nice right, looking out this way yep i might like to see this one again like at blue hour once the lights come on Right. I think I see a wire here. I think this is one of those guys that's lit up from the inside. And if we could just like maybe go a little bit darker, wait till the sun dips a little bit and get the lights on. I'd like to see that shot as well. Um, not that it might necessarily be better. It's just a, a difference that I might like to see. Oof. That's cool. I love the lines comes right down into the corner here and kind of anchors the whole picture. We've caught the eagle right in between these two branches. This branch doesn't intersect the head. It just has them kind of framed nicely. It's against a nice background. Very nice job, Jim. Yeah, it certainly checks a lot of boxes for, for what you're looking for. You know, very, yeah. very sharp. Uh, again, good exposure. Um, you know, it's Could be, nicely done. like the shutter speed might be a little low. I might be seeing a little bit of camera shake in there. But other than that, man, nice. <laughs> more dogs in snow i love the little bit of snow right there on the tip of the nose yeah back to what you're saying about timing caught it very well you know with the, the front mm -hmm. paw coming up and yep yeah i might look for like slightly different background but on a spur of the moment shot like this i don't know that you would do a whole lot about it nice Oh man, that's cool. Hmm. I don't know if it's wintry, but 
Yeah, everybody remember that comment we had over the summer? That's cool. okay. So it looks like I'm going to say probably a longer lens here because I love the way the comet just dominates the sky. It's huge in the frame. Yeah, I mean, it, it certainly is a, a tough shot to get done well given the lighting challenge. Uh, mm -hmm. The only thing I'm not sure of, and it, it's kind of small on my screen, but it, there seems are those power lines in the foreground or is that like. Uh, there's, it looks like there's two power lines right here. Okay. Not that, yeah. and then there's more power lines right here, and then there's a road. So it's it is kind of a repeat, repeating pattern that I can be okay with. Yeah. And there's more lines up here. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't even see those at first. Okay. I mean, yeah. it, it was such a good job of capturing the comet, which is the hard part to do. And I'd assume, and maybe it wasn't, but I'd assume this was more of a plan shot that trying to to pick your location if possible to avoid. Yeah you know, avoid those types of things might have helped, but certainly very nicely done. What I really love about the location is the way that the comet is kind of framed right between the, like the in dip the in the mountains yeah. here, right? It's centered nicely in those. Yep. Very cool. I really like this. That's such a neat shot. A couple of our judges really liked this one as well. This one is definitely a contender. We definitely had some talk on that one, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a variety of reasons in terms of just at first looking at it going, what exactly is at that? At first, one? yeah, like what is it? And then how well it is done as far as, you know, the, the angle of the light, the, you know, the, the, the speculation of, well, was that color really there? Was the color added in post? Because uh, it, it makes for a very impactful image. Yeah. Very, very cool. Nice job, Anna. Yeah, if you can fill us in on what that was or how you did it we'd love to hear yes i know is it like i'm assuming it's on a window maybe yeah, you, but but i'm not sure and i yeah i'd like to know a little bit more about this one holy moly is that a good shot yeah timing's everything huh? Right. This is another one of those like when the weather gets weird, grab your camera. Right. But everything, lines, really, yeah, everything fell into place with, you know, the, the fellow walking up the sidewalk next to the platform uh, next to the train. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm assuming it wasn't quite moving yet, although it may have been. And if it was, that's certainly a really great timing with the framing of the water tower off to the left and all. Excellent. Yeah. I love like all the lines kind of pull you down in this way to the people that are on the platform. Nice job, Tim. And this is such a neat close up. I don't know if like I'm I, this is another one where I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Is this like when they talk about like a freezing fog that where you get these thin feathery ice formations? It's such yeah, a cool looking. It took me a second too, and I'm still not, I don't think I really know, for, like you said, for certain what it is. But, you know, again, here's where, you know, that dead center composition works. We're normally mm -hmm. looking to follow the rule of thirds, but that kind of feathery like item that Scott talked about, you know, having that contrasting so much to the background, the way it's framed really works well. Yeah. I mean, you could try a different crop, maybe come in a little bit from the top and the left, but I don't know. I think, like, yeah, not necessarily. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's, and the selective focus has got this right here. Yeah. Hoarfrost. You know, I've heard the word and I'm not sure I know exactly what that is. I'm going to have to go look it up now when we're done here. I, I'm sure Excellent I don't know science what that teacher. is. <laughs> Interesting. It's good to know that we've got a science teacher in the chat here someplace to help us out with this stuff. <laughs> this was a neat one. There was some talk about this one as well. I love the backstory here. Yeah. Netflix came to Stroudsburg's Main Street. We took advantage of the lights and snow to create this horror before Christmas. Like that's okay. Here's an opportunity. They lit the heck out of this street. Let's go have fun with it. Yeah, I mean, that, that certainly is a statement image, um, you know, and, and 
very good job in combining your, your ambient lights going on in the background. Uh, it looks like our, our Jack Frost or whatever he is there has something going on, carrying a candle or something. And, and it's a very complex shot. You know, it, it, it's one to get the lighting that you have, the background not blown out with those, those string lights overhead, but you can still see the white face well and you have enough detail into the shadows, at least from what I can see. Very well pulled off and as well as yeah. a very clever idea. Yeah. Nice, nice job. And this looks like this was, let's see, 28 inch Paraglow softbox with a Nissan DI700 flash. Okay, so this is not huge equipment, right? Like the DI700 is a standard, like a on camera flash. It's not big studio gear. Nice. But the small portable setup is working for you here. Another dog. Another dog in the snow. Look at this guy. With that, that German Shepherd head tilt that he's doing. Yeah, here's one that I, I know, Scott, you were talking before about Watch Your Horizon. But this, to me, it just works with the playfulness of the image. Uh, yeah. You know, we have the sun in the background, but it's not... It's not um, you know, dominating, it's not drawing your eye too much away. Um, you know, the dark face of the dog, I think possibly could have been brightened with a little exposure compensation, but obviously you have to watch because of the rest of the scene, you don't want to lose that too. Mm -hmm. Right, but there's this great warm against cool, right? Like you've got the warm low yeah. light coming in against the cool of the snow and it's given us a nice rim light. So we've got this great separation around the ears that could get lost in the background otherwise. Yep, and a good, good, very good bokeh. You know, nicely done. Yeah, yep. I like this one. I'm not feeling a winter theme here, but I'm feeling a relief from the winter theme here. Well, depending where it is, it might be winter. Just it could be. Right. <laughs> I'd jump in that water. Overall, nicely put together. I love the layers of interest in this shot, though. We've got the foreground, middle ground, background, and there's something going on kind of everywhere you look. Yeah, that definitely pulls you in with the, the way the lines come from the right and just kind of pull you off to the left, you know, proceeding through the back of the image. Yeah, you, your eye almost kind of zigzags back up through there. This was a neat shot. Several of our judges commented on this one. I have never now, is seen this the one where I read it was. Uh, sorry, is this the one I read because it's a little small mask? That this was a spider web. Yeah, I saw on a spider web. That's amazing. I've never seen that before. That's very cool. Thank you for sharing this with us. Yeah, and this to me was intriguing because when you think about it, if that is a spider web, obviously some really good use of either a macro lens or a close-up filter, something to get super close, and yet yeah. the lighting worked because you know the main. Uh, icicle, for lack of a better phrase, has beautiful mm -hmm. rim light all around it. You don't lose separation anywhere on that, which is, it's, yeah. it really makes it pop. Yeah. Yeah, Matt says this was a 60 millimeter micro Nikkor. Ah, there we go. Nice, nice job. Hmm. That one isolated rosebud getting some snow on it. Kind of a poetic image here. I'm not going to start to sing. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> yeah, I think you have a, a pretty dramatic again image here. This one, I think, probably might have benefited a little bit from uh, moving the rose itself a little more towards one of your intersections for the rule of thirds. Mm, um, yeah. You know, I mean, it, it kind of hits across the top there, but. I might have shifted a little left or a little right. And right, a little. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. But again, nicely done and, for focus. Exposure held together well. So. Yeah. I'm wondering if I might have like taken a step around the side and see what a different background might do here, too. There's these strong regular lines coming through this way. Yeah, you know, the, you know those, I... those lines, I think you're right. Those, those lines, Scott, I'm they're just enough out. I don't mind them. I think probably it's a little more distracting. So it almost looks like a gutter or soffit on an angle across the top. I think if the back was consistent with those first couple lines, it would have okay. yeah. blended better. But. Ice pond with reflection of the trees. I love this 
especially this kind of area where you can get that like the transition between the ice and the clear water. Yeah, from a creativity standpoint, I really like this because again, you, we as humans, as we view things and photographers, we tend to literally focus in on our subject. We don't necessarily stop to see how else can I see this and the reflection is a great way to do it. I, I would probably really like it. And again, I don't know if this is on a pond or what the conditions permitting were, but I think if we could have gotten in tight enough to have all reflection of trees without the straw or the whatever we have in the left foreground, right. I think you have the start, almost yes, like sure. if you crop the, the image vertically on just that uh, right half, um, I think you have something um, that now, you know, really, because th that your eye is going to tend to go to an out of focus foreground. And if it's done for framing purposes, it can be powerful. Here, there's a little too much of it that I, my eye goes to that more than what I really want to see, which is that beautiful reflection and the different shades in the ice. Right. Even if you went square like this way. Yeah. Right. Just leave a little Just bit a of little it. Bit. Yep. Yeah. That's kind of a nice composition. I like that right there. <laughs> I had no idea what to make of this one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm just imagining like trying to get the picture of the reindeer and then he sticks his nose like right in your face. <laughs> like the focus isn't even up here on the nose. It's back here someplace. So it's like he just kind of stuck right in there. <laughs> his tongue sticking out or something up here. Uh, that's what I, like. <laughs> I couldn't quite tell. Is he really... Uh how much he was objecting to this photo being taken. <laughs> Thank you, I got a laugh out of this one. I like this. <laughs> oh, that's neat. I like this use of reflections here. Yeah, the, the, and the really long, kind of going back to one of your comments, you know, it's a negative space. I think that really long foreground ties in well because again we have you know some very solid composition going on. Your eye is definitely you know drawn for that leading light. It's so powerful because it is so bright. I love the fact that the ice has that blue glow. It's not black black. So a yeah. lot of very good things going on there. Very powerful image. Yeah. Yeah, that that warm against cool contrast again really draws you right in. Ears flapping in the breeze. One big smile. <laughs> yeah, and here, I think this one again from a timing perspective caught it at just the right moment. I can't right. quite gauge sharpness on my end here, but um, you know, a white dog in the snow is one of those things that's very difficult to shoot well. Yeah, yeah. especially when it's moving. Looks like so. it might have been cropped in a little tight. I think we're starting to see a little bit of artifact on there, but like I like that the little clumps of snow getting kicked up or frozen in midair over here. Yep. That, that's definitely a happy winter image. Yeah. Hmm. Nice. The over at, uh, yeah, Lehigh Valley Zoo. Cool. Yeah, and this one, you know, one of the things I really enjoy are images that are on the abstract or illustrative types of size. And here, I really like a lot of what's going on I think a, maybe a little tighter crop um, to more of just, again, almost like an abstract of it. Mm -hmm. uh, whatever's in the center kind of hang, hanging down, if that's an icicle or something, my eye tends to go to that. And I really right. want to stay on just getting lost in all of the other uh, lights. Yeah. A great that or maybe an even yeah, wider view so you really get that spreading canopy kind of thing. Yeah. Get under it with a super wide angle lens and make it almost look like a firework. Oh yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, Jack, you're right. That that, that did remind life. me of Avatar when I first looked through here. Like the bioluminescent things. Cardinal among the raindrops. I think we had a couple, if I recall. Um, we got a couple. Again, well, I mean, you know. Cardinal out there in the snow, that says winter, right? I was going to say the quintessential bird of winter. Yeah, yep. Here I think we, it's, it's 
coming close to really working well. My main challenge with this one is kind of two things. It's a little far away, but certainly that may be the, the limitation of, of what our photographer had available. And they, you know, Cardinals, if you try to shoot them, are very skittish. Um, mm -hmm. But I think if we take a little step left um, so that, that uh, the tree was further out of the frame if possible, I think the tree splitting the bird kind of presents right, a challenge right. for your eye. Right, like the line that comes right down through here. Yeah. yeah, just a little left or a little right. If you could take this guy and place him against this lighter background. Yeah. While we're talking about terrible weather, I just wanted to go over, since we got a little time here, we talk about a couple of odds and ends that I kind of keep in my camera bag for shooting in this kind of weather while we're talking about it. Um, this doesn't look like a whole lot, but this is my rain sleeve. If you guys don't have these things already, they're, uh, they come like two in a package for these little guys. And it's like a little poncho for your camera. I cannot recommend this highly enough for something to keep in your bag. Like I can take my camera, I'm gonna stick it in this thing and then I can draw, draw the drawstring up around the end of it so that I can take pictures without worrying about like, you know, the camera's weather sealed, but it's only so weather sealed. If I'm gonna be out in weather like this and I keep telling you, go out when there's weather like this because it looks cool. Uh, yeah, get yourself a little insurance and pick up some rain sleeves. Um, they're super cheap. I just keep a couple in my camera bag. Yeah, we've certainly been on a lot of photo expeditions where it would have been handy for people to have had that, be it at Lakota Wolf or Conowingo or other places that we hope to be getting back to very soon. So, Yeah, yeah. the last time we were up at Lakota, we just got drenched. And uh, I was handing out the rain sleeves left and right. This kind of sets a a specific mood for me. Like we've got these desert plants separated from the snow outside by sitting on the, the windowsill here. Yeah, you know, this one at first, I, I, when I was just doing a quick scan through trying to narrow some of our, our entries down, I didn't really stop to give it as, as much of a, a, a like I'm, I came back around to it. I really started to appreciate it more because you're right, you have these, these succulents and these warm weather things almost kind of like staring out the window at your weather that they abhor, you know, and it's just such a, mm -hmm. such a contrast. And yet the lighting is done well, that they're not complete silhouettes that you'd have trouble telling what they were. So I can make out enough detail in, in the interior shots of the cactus, but I'm all not losing what's outside so I can tell what's going on outside. So. Yeah. I like the way the light is handled in this one. I like the, just the silhouettes out there on the ice. This is not local, right? Like we don't get to play hockey out on the lake around here. Not this year yet anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this is just so well done. I mean, like you said, Scott, with the, you know, the, the highlight, the reflection on the ice being a little off center, really mm -hmm. draws you in. You have the tree kind of framing out the right hand side. Um, just enough foreground, just enough sky. Uh, nice job on the crop as well as just kind of you know, showing some cool winter activity. Yeah. Oh, one of those little, I don't know, the sailboat on ice skates things out there. Hmm. That's kind of neat. This is one of my favorites to do the like the super wide angle and get close to something and then show all the stuff in the background. Yeah, and I think this certainly had some some strong points going for it. Um, and, and like you said, it's got probably a nice wide angle like that, looking at, at the, the perspective of it. I think maybe getting in a little tighter if that grass was a little bit more into the right corner, because uh, mm. it's almost, you know, the, it's, it's a leading line, but it's almost competing with where you want your eye to go. Um, so, and that might be able to be solved with a little bit of a crop, but certainly nicely done. Good job balancing the foreground light with the sky. Um, you know, yeah. Sometimes that can be challenging. Yeah. yeah. Maybe like a, like a crop and rotate, flatten out the horizon, come in a little bit, just a yeah. tiny bit of finagling, but 
overall, I love the like the atmosphere in this one's real nice. Yep. Hey, speaking of atmosphere. Oh, December 2020. Okay, so this was that last snowstorm we got. Yeah, and that's just a that's something that uh, I don't know what clothing lines are left, but I mean, you know, you could you could picture that being in a in a Neiman Marcus or a Macy's or somebody who would do some lifestyle oriented uh, advertising right. of, of their cold weather gear. Just nicely done, great expressions. Yeah, I love the light in here too. It's not so overcast that everything gets flattened out. There's a strong light coming in from the side. Yep. Right. That's neat. I don't often see these, but I like the uh, formations of the frost and then catching a little bit of what's going on in the window outside. Mm -hmm. We got the, and placing like the thing that's interesting, like there's this, this one bit here that sticks out nicely and placing it on the dark background so you can actually see it like that would disappear if you kind of placed it back here against the sky yeah nice use of wide angle right to give you some like those foreground elements and then the middle ground and the background and we've kind of framed out the little birdhouse back there i'm going to get back to the comment on timing uh, i can imagine that the way that snow is um, piled on top of things. It probably was only like that for a very short time and then it was gone. So oh, yeah, job getting out there when it was just right to capture it and, you know, nice use of, of like Scott said, the framing of everything. I might take off a little more of the left, but then you end up mm. in birdhouse too centered. So, um, but you know, nicely done. Okay, so this one's all about catching that drop just as it leaves the icicle, right? Like this guy's the star of the show. Yeah, and that's one that might be interesting to try in a, in a, in a black and white and punch up the contrast a bit just to see. Oh, yeah. I mean, you might lose the, the separation if you get rid of the blue in the sky. Mm -hmm. uh, but obviously, um, again, that, that's hard to expose well because your camera's going to want to silhouette uh, that drop right. especially. But nicely done, really a... Yeah, got yeah, a pretty impactful image. Right, like maybe just pull up, like it doesn't look like there's a lot of clean whites in here. And if you could just like bump the exposure up a tiny bit to bring a little sparkle out of that. But overall, like the timing, I wonder how long you had to sit there, take a picture, wait, take a picture, wait to catch when the drop just leaves the icicle. I, I have a shot like that from quite some years ago, and, and it was very challenging because you have that delay from when you see it starting to drop till your brain kicks in, till your finger goes, till the shutter goes. So you, you almost hope that it's routine enough that you start to be able to anticipate. Mm. You know, when it's right, like if it's got a regular rhythm to it, you can kind of yeah. count. I'm going for a real old timey look on this one, huh? between the sepia yeah. and then this, I don't know what's the, what puzzled me about this one is what's going on with the focus. I can't tell if this is a filter or maybe a lens effect or exactly what's going on here that causes this to be sort of, but not exactly out of focus out toward the edges. But it reminds yeah. me of like an old Kodak Brownie camera that were, that were never quite in focus out around the outer edges. Yeah, I was, I was going to say, I think this is, is really, a, a, you know, a, an artistic statement, uh, you know, throwing in the, the, this almost sepia tone, uh, mm -hmm. the, the choice of out of focus areas. Um, you know, I, I think it works well all pulled together. There's a sunset and a half. These things are all about color, right? Like this is all about that orange versus blue. And then just enough landscape here to let us know what's going on. Yeah. And, and again, very good use of negative space. I like that mm -hmm. you have, you know, a combination of the sky where you have the deep, rich uh, royal blue going, but then you, you kind of offset that with going into the gold and the gray, the cloud, and they, and they almost, they're fighting for equal space within the frame. 
uh, you know, that, that tree in the lower left worked out just well that you have the, the blue sky behind it because obviously a great cloud behind them, it would become mush. It wouldn't really pop yeah, out. Like yeah. That. Yep, nicely done. Yep. <laughs> They're not dogs. They're not dogs. <laughs> Yeah, that's, I think this is another one that's all about timing, right? Like that gesture and that interaction. Yeah, I think that, you know, obviously nice winter scene again, holds together well with how the lighting was for the day. We're able to see the, I'm assuming donkeys. I'm not great with farm animals. <laughs> um, but, you know, again, just nice timing with the, the interaction. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, focus is good. You get just enough of the background out. Uh, but you can still tell it's a nice winter scene. What would you think of maybe trying to place them a little higher in the frame? Yeah, you know, I was, wow. as a as a photo observer, we always kind of guess what else might be going on, right? Um, yeah. And I'm assuming there's probably a fence that's being cropped out just below their chin um, mm -hmm. that depending on the original framing may have been able to have been a foreground or it may have been distracting, who knows? Right. Um, the only thing I thought when I was looking at this was, I don't know if it might have been possible to have gotten the brown donkey's attention enough to have gotten separation between their faces, you know, have him also looking at the camera. And this obviously has a nice uh, mood to it, you know, with, you know, one staring at the other. I'm just not sure if you could have mm -hmm. gotten one of them to make eye contact with the camera, what that might have done. But then again, I can imagine these are not the most cooperative subjects. <laughs> Yeah, but that interaction is really the the star here. I like the just a little bit of rim light here picking up the hair too. But very nice hair light picking up these little guys right here. Yeah. Well, this is neat. Well, that's not local. Manitoba. Cool. Probably a lot of cool things going on up there this time of year. Yeah, I bet. I mean, you know, certainly for a, a wintry scene. You know, the lighting was handled well because, you know, again, outdoor at night with Christmas lights, you have, you know, some you know, sodium vapor or whatever the other street lights are uh, mm -hmm. held everything together. Um, you know, the only thing I'm not sure of is that the, that left corner gets a little bright. Um, but I don't know that I mind that because it kind of gives me a place to mm -hmm. follow in. Too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we've got the, the sky lit up just enough that we're catching the silhouette of the trees back here. So definitely well handled on like trying to manage the exposure of all these different light sources. Yeah. Wow. I know a lot of medical professionals who are feeling pretty burnt out and to see them keep doing what they're doing is pretty inspiring. Yeah, this is certainly a, a very purposefully put together image, I yeah. assume, or it's a very lucky grab that was able to be brought in to tell a story. But, you know, here's one that you have very, very um, judicious use of focus, the lighting, you know, everything to me about this says it's very methodical. Doesn't mean it, again, wasn't a happenstance, but um, very much a, a wonderful photojournalistic capture. Mm -hmm. Right. Like I'm thinking like along the lines of a Eugene Smith or somebody. Talk a lot about leading lines. We don't see a lot of S curves. And here we got a lot of nice curvy lines kind of leading us backward into the photo. Yeah, again, calendar type shot, you know, certainly mm -hmm. works very well with timing, composition, nicely done. The only thing I might do would have been to crop off the very right edge with that one snowflake that's like- Oh, this point. one super bright one over here. Yeah, yeah I see I, what you mean. I think you either zap that quick in Photoshop or crop it just slightly. Or just crop it in a touch. Really lets your eye focus down the lane. Oh, thank you, buddy. Thanks for the insight. So, uh, yeah, the only thing that I'm looking at here is that there's a little bit of a trail coming off the snowflake. And to me, it looks like it's kind of going the wrong way. The way that I would fix that was it would be by switching over to rear curtain sync. So the flash fires at the end of the exposure. 
so that the trail mm -hmm. kind of makes it look like the snowflake is going down rather than up. That's a tiny little nitpick thing, but something to play around with. That's nice. A couple of our judges mentioned this one as well. That we one is all have, about getting out there at that time of day, right? Yeah, we definitely have some chatter on this because again, when you see the frost on the uh, this foreground weeds, again, mm -hmm. you can pretty much imagine that was a very short lived time. Um, and composition here, I love this. I think it just really excellently done. Great job balancing the colors and, and the different uh, lighting considerations. I, I don't know how much this is out of the camera versus how much was done in post. But I, I think the end result here is, is very nicely done. Yeah, I like this a lot. This one, Steve, I didn't know this place existed. The Rock Hill Trolley Museum. Like, I'm going to have to go out there and check this out. Yeah, you know, and this to me almost who, feels like, a, like an old snapshot. It, it definitely does, you know, especially when I, I have photos. My grandparents of Allentown with the trolleys in Allentown and as a nerdy kid I had a big train platform. You know, this to me was mm -hmm. a very reminiscent type photo. Um, I would probably look to have tried to brighten the exposure a little bit to see if you could do that without losing the snow and having it go all white. And timing wise, mm -hmm. I'm not sure. I'm assuming the trolley was moving and it may have been this could have been more of a grab shot. But that blue garage door, whatever, is just off the trolley. It just kind of oh, clashes back with, here. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I don't know if it's, you know, if, if it's something we worth or whatever that's really try to Photoshop that background some. But the leading line of the trolley coming in, the tracks just, you know, kind of fading off to the left. Like anchored right here in the corner. Yeah. A lot yeah. of very good things there. And probably with a, a little bit of work post, um, could have really gotten that to, to have been excellent. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I see what you mean. Like maybe like a half a second later, just to block out this blue thing. Yeah. But again, you would have had to have been a little further down the tracks then. So, you know, again, easy for us to critique after the fact. Um, right. This could be something that somebody could have just walked up to and had to be a grab shot. And I thought the exact same thing. I'm like, boy, this could have been <laughs> really, you know, going back to the old time effect either black yeah. and white or like the bridge was done, do it in a, in a, in a toned, almost kind like a CPU. selenium. Uh, I like the sel oh, selenium. Oh yeah. Yeah. That was always my favorite. Mm -hmm. I can really see that for this image, you know? So for those of you who aren't familiar, go Google selenium toning. You'll see what it is. <laughs> Stinks Showing. horribly, but it's, it's a cool looking toner. It's showing my age. Yeah. <laughs> Raise your hand. If you remember working in the wet dark room. All right. <laughs> Nice job on the timing. I feel like I want to see like a little more above. Her hands are coming right up into the top of the frame. And I want to see a little more like up, right? So they're not right at the edge. Yeah, I think just a little light bit of breathing room. Fantastic. Oh, oh, that's what I was going to say. I, I'm curious, was this truly available light? Was this some off-camera flash? Because you, you, it, you really have an excellent job of balancing and um, I love the background, you know, the door, uh, mm -hmm. it, it's, you know, the, I don't find the lines distracting because they're minimal oh, and they're, yeah. they're consistent. Um, yep. but no, very, uh, very nice image. Yeah. A couple of us were talking about this one. I like this one a lot. One, one of the judges mentioned the one, the thing that stood out about this was that a sports photo doesn't have to be an action shot. And I think this is a great example. Yeah, and you can see this got a lot of comments um, and chatter going on. I mean, it, it's this is the type of image that's telling a story that really, you know, as the viewer, you start to almost make up what's going on, right? You start to look at this and you start to imagine all the possible things and the, and the human connection that could be going on here. Yeah, very nice. Good winter landscape. It's cool things going on here. I think a little more contrast. Yeah, a little more contrast because you're you know we're holding everything together since yeah. it's um, not a sunny day, but at the mm -hmm. same time it, it's it's a little too flat for the amount of texture and depth that could be there. Yeah. 
And maybe, like, I'm not entirely sure how I feel about all the white down here. Like, maybe this would work if it was, like, square. Yeah, square. Yeah. Like, not, not to chop all the snow off the foreground, but just come in a little bit. Yeah, because you want to keep a be base. Try in black and white as well. Oh, yeah, you definitely need to keep that. Yeah, some negative space down there. Two cardinals. Oh, we've got the male and female pair here. Nice. Yeah, I, I, this one I thought if this had just been a vertical uh, and get the birds you know, slightly off to the left of the frame, mm -hmm. you right. have a really strong... Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, but that's nicely done, though, that it's yep. great to catch the pair together. And the snowflakes hanging in the air. Yep. Nice. I didn't say I'm not a fan of the Cardinals. Who said I'm not fans of the Cardinals? I like the Cardinals. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more a Phillies person, I'll admit. <laughs> Just because they're local. That's a nice job of like just the right time of day to get that shot. Yeah, just yeah, that they, little bit of warmth in the sky and the moon back there. Yeah, a lot of things done very well in this, obviously. Uh, you know, when you talk about textbook leading lines coming in, uh, framing with the tree, you know, providing it you know, on that left edge there just enough space in the rest to have it feel open. Um, yeah, very well done. The only thing I might have tried would be to get just a little bit higher um, to get a little separation between the farmhouse or whatever in that top rail. But mm, that's, right that's, that's obviously nitpicking. I mean, it, it's a very nicely done image. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I like these guys. You just, you've got the lines that are kind of anchored right in the corner up here that comes down in this way and then down in this corner that comes in this way. And they're kind of framed yeah, in the snow at, that's falling. At first, the fence put me off, but then the more I looked at it, 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 it grew to work with me. You know? and, and, and again, you know, the, kind of the eye contact from the animals, that I think it mm -hmm. worked well. The comment says, though I call the Lehigh Valley home, I'm spending my winter up in Alaska. Good for you. I don't know many people that head north for the winter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Again, a lot of good elements in this one. Though. A lot of depth to it. Um, mm -hmm. you know, good, good use of the, the background. Yeah. It, it, keeping the exposure in well. It's a little flat to me, uh, mm -hmm. but it also is a mood. You know, that, that kind of sets a certain tone for it. Yeah. I kind of want to see what this what, what might look like just a little wider as this edge of the mountain comes down this way and gets and stops. Like, I wonder if that continues all the way to the water. But a neat, neat shot. Yeah. This guy out here. These are another one that's kind of tough to sneak up on sometimes. Like I get a little closer and then they fly just out of reach and I get a little closer and then they get up and fly just out of reach again. Yeah, I think a lot of a lot of good things going on here as far as where we caught. Um, it's an egret, correct? Or a heron? Uh, it says blue heron. Blue heron. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> my only suggestion again on this would be to maybe try a vertical crop or something that gets us not dead center. Um, right. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of space here that I feel is not quite pulling its weight, right? Yeah. But if you went in Could like I, this way. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to tell, but I think we got a pretty sharp face. So, you know, get, yeah. getting out a little bit stronger little... in the image would. Yeah. And this reflection down here, I like that. Yep. Yeah. That's cool. Kathleen, did I see that you're in the chat? Was this like a captive bird, or did you just happen to catch an actual snowy owl sitting on a fence post? Yeah, he, that's an impressive of, shot. A lot of character going on there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I love the light comes in at, an, at enough of an angle here to really illuminate the eye. 
Yep. Look at the size of those talents. Holy moly. Neat, neat shot. Ooh, this one was shot on film. Remember film? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, this, this again, really falls in a calendar kind of look. Like, isn't it just yeah. like, very well, you know, foreground framing the tree? Uh, just very nicely done. Lighting was very good. Exposure handled well. Yeah. There's really not much in that I could have could have said to do differently. Yeah, some kind of a local postcard. Mm -hmm. oh, I like that. This one's got a definite mood to it as well, right? Oh, Kathleen filled this in. It was sitting there, and she took the shot, and then it left. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you must have a Holy way with Good for you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This to me is is very very close to being so striking. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, my only wish would be to to I think to maintain the composition that works so well would be to clone out that half a bench in the in the lower right the one the, uh, the, the way this one shops off. Which I'm not a big fan of post processing, but I I just think. Mm -hmm. Either that or moving off just enough to get it out of the frame without losing the comp uh, composition that's here. I think, right. so. again, back to your point, Scott, about catching the weather. It's just the right amount of fog to set a wonderful mood. We can see the foreground, foreground clearly, but it really sets a nice kind of mystery mood heading off into the background. Yeah, for sure. A dog. <laughs> This little face with the snow all over it. <laughs> <laughs> and like, this looks like all four paws off the ground. Snow kicked up everywhere. And I love the way the snow is caught in the light here. Yeah. And so you see it all scattered through the shadows. Yeah, I think it'd be nice hard job on the timing. You'd be hard pressed to tell which dog was happier, this one or our other big smiley dog. <laughs> Good job getting that action frozen and... and and, and handling the lighting. Yeah. Nothing crops off. We didn't chop any ears. We didn't chop the paw at the bottom. Nicely held in the frame. I like this one. <laughs> this I know we had a little chat about too, like just mm -hmm. the, you know, the, the execution of getting Capturing the snowflakes, getting both the dogs looking up like that. I don't know if there was someone just out of view, you know, holding up a Scooby snack or whatever's going on. <laughs> um, but you know, you got the you got the matching outfits going. I mean, this was you know pretty well staged of the the four legged kids here. Yeah, for sure. Very nice. Okay, say something positive about the Cardinal, Scott. I like, you know what? I think of all the Cardinal photos, I think I like this one best. I like this one a lot. He's nice and sharp. <laughs> Somebody's keeping score. <laughs> <laughs> you you got to throw the donkeys in there, there too, because we had at least one picture of donkeys or something. Well, if we create a like a farm animal category, then that'll account for the donkeys and the sheep. There we go. So for our next photo contest, we can take odds on what type of animal gets the most. <laughs> but I, I agree. I, I think dog versus cardinals. <laughs> a lot of a lot of really good elements here. At, at yeah. first, I was a little put off at the centering of of the bird, but then again, the way the composition works, and I I don't know if it was post that the vignette was added or if that was truly captured um, right in camera, which would be wonderful. Uh, but no, it, it's very nice of a strong image. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like this is. We don't have any twigs coming in front of the bird. The bird's yeah. head is nicely isolated against the background, so we don't have any issues with separation there. The background, like the soft focus in the background, really, really works for me here. We've just got sort of this patchy. You can see there's stuff going on back there, but the depth of field to fall off is really nice. I might just go slightly lighter on that vignette. It looks like it might be a little heavy. But other than that, I like this one a lot. Yeah, and certainly if you're if you're a bird photographer, you know, my hat off, my hats off to you because they are extremely difficult to shoot because, again, they're 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 easily scared. They're extremely small, so it takes <laughs> a, a tiny, they're quick. 
yeah, yeah. a lot of luck to happen to get close to one or a lot of gear to be able to mm -hmm. get them from a distance. And a lot of patience to sit out there in the snow and wait oh, yeah. and wait and wait until it's comfortable enough that you're not going to startle it when you take the picture. Nice job. Yeah. What a nicely put together scene here. Like everything's working together here. We got light, we got costume, we got wardrobe, we got setting. Yeah, I mean, it's it, obviously, again, kind of that uh, catalog type shot. It's very well done. And like you said, it's got exposures handled well, timing with freezing the, the, the snowflakes or the snow powder coming mm -hmm. out wonderfully done. I wonder what this might look like if we had one with the model making eye contact with the camera, just so you had those eyes to connect to. Yeah, I was thinking that same thing. And obviously we can't quite tell here, but like imagine if she had like really piercing blue eyes, how much that was. Mm -hmm. The only, I mean like the, the only nitpick I've got here would be like, there's this one little bit of stray hair right up against the brim of the hat and just tuck that up, you know, or Photoshop it. But other than that, Nicely executed overall. Yep. See, there's a that's a nice use of reflection too, huh? Like yeah, this reminds this me of happened. like why I like to go out hiking in the winter, in the first place. Yeah, and again, is it's hard to tell how much they moved around or anything, but definitely, you know, really got just the right position to have all the elements come together. Yeah. Excellent job, Paul. Right, like the, the foreground branches here nicely frame that one tree in the back. Yep. Another one, this one got a lot of likes as well. This was like right on the edge of being monochrome all by itself. I'm not sure if this is, is that black and white or is it just so completely gray out? I think it's black and white. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, you have your leading line going in. Um, mm -hmm. Kind of draws you back into the cabin kind of, back here. Yeah, and it, it's it's a shame that the, the black top had melted through. Like, that was the only thing. Like, I thought it had just been like a consistent, you know, but this is something yeah. we can't control, right? Um, yeah. I, you know, but good leading lines. My brain wants to know a little more about what is that subject. That was the only thing on this one. I, I had a question. I was like, what exactly am I... Am I trying to see? Is it a house? Is it a barn? Is it a shed? Is it, you know, mm -hmm. photographically and, and compositionally, it's nicely done. The vignette is interesting because I always tell people, like, normally you go dark with the vignette so that your eye goes to the light thing in the middle. But in the snow, that kind of reverses and you want to kind of yeah. fade out so that the dark thing is what's isolated. I would just go a little stronger on the feather so we don't see a clear oval, right? So there was just a hint of a vignette on there. But nice. This is, what is that? Lehigh Parkway. This What do they call this? The Hunter's Cabin? Is that what this one is? Oh, yeah. What struck me about this one was the sort of non-traditional crop. Now, it's not an 8x10. It's not a 4x6. It's exactly the shape that it needs to be for the subject. Yeah, and I like you have the, the uh, footprints in the snow leading you in. Um, you, know, you got the rich blue sky timing wise. We didn't blow out any highlights, which is always a challenge for this time of day with this type of scene. Uh, yeah. At first, I kind of thought it was too rectangular. But then as I started looking, if you if you lose some of the tops of the trees, you kind of lose the effect of the image. So I, I, I agree. I think it was a, a good crop. Yeah. Okay, so coming from a family of skiers, the feeling that I get from this picture is jealousy. Yeah, very much a storytelling image. I love this, right? Like we have, we've stopped in the middle of the day. You know, this, you know, not the end of the day. So now we're just taking a quick break before we head back out. Skis stuck in the snow. Dog looking up for a treat here. Like there's the more you look at this, the more little details you see. I like all the stuff that's going on in here. Yeah, the radio flyer next to the door, you know, the old fashioned mm -hmm. sled just. This is a neat one that I kept coming back to. 
Mike, I agree with you. I don't go in for a ton of post-processing, but the, whatever post-processing is done here is really interesting, right? It almost starts to look like a pencil drawing or something. And I'm not sure how much of that is post, and this is how the much kind of that of, is just. Right, there, there's some yeah. combination that's working and, and this is the kind that I do enjoy because to me, this is again, almost more of an illustration. And that's something I used to enjoy is taking my photo as a basis and then making it more of an illustrative uh, image. This I could see printed on like, you know, the smooth fine art paper or the deep matte paper. Oh, this looks so good frame. on deep matte. Yeah. You know, that, that would for definitely the, be a smooth fine art for sure. Yep. I could see that being a piece to frame and really put up nicely. Yeah. Very nice job, Deb. Okay. This is how you do this shot. Right, like when you want to get the, like the, the ice hanging off the branch, right, and the icicles starting to form, right? But, yeah. uh, yeah, man, I like agree. I, I would say very much a, a textbook image. I mean, you have separation, you, you have detail, you have sharpness, and I really like how you got just that one little specular highlight of the sun just kind of to the 10 o'clock of center. Mm -hmm. And this, it's just like you got all this sparkly. Yeah, I like this one a lot. Oh, Deb's giving us a little awful background. It was the only way to hide it. Okay. <laughs> well, it worked out well for you because it's a great shot. Well, that, that's kind of the whole point of, of, of doing, you know, out of focus backgrounds, right? Because most backgrounds are awful. Mm -hmm. Even even if it's a if it's not awful, it's, it's going to distract. And here are the tones and, and kind well, of I the, think we were talking about Deb's shot was this one. Oh, I'm sorry, got you. Right. Okay. So she's disguising the, the construction in the background with the pro processing that she's done here. But the processing works so well. Yeah. Right? Like there's this almost like paintbrushy kind of effect going on around the edges. It's not just a hard vignette. Yep. And it's very cool. But this one, the sparkle. Right, all the little stuff going on here. And again, it's the warm against cool. It's the color contrast that really sells that. Yeah. Nothing warm about this one at all. This one has a very different feel to it. Yeah, but a very classic winter scene. Again, nicely handled mm -hmm. in terms of the composition, the exposure. Um, yeah, I might have tried this one in black and white or in, in purposefully toning it blue. Mm -hmm. well, I kind of like the uh, like the tone of the wood that I'm picking up here. Mm -hmm. I might be lost. Yeah, no, very well done. Yeah. I'm a sucker for old barns, so. Yeah. <laughs> this was another one I thought was really well done, right? The same kind of like we saw with the dog where the the snow is lit up with the sun coming through it from behind. Yeah, nice again, I don't, on the timing. <clears throat> I don't know how much, of, again, this was happenstance versus planning, but certainly getting the sun behind the subject like that so that you, you get that rim lighting and the glow of the snow as they're like exploding up out of the snow on, on the snowboard. Um, yeah. Wonderfully done, wonderfully done. Yeah. If anything, I might like to see the snowboarder a little higher in the frame. Right, so we get that sense of being up. Like, yeah. and that might just be like crop eight by ten. Right, yeah. and they'll just be higher in the frame. Yeah, I was gonna say I don't think I'd want to see any more of the the white snow, but I agree you could you can right. lose a little of the trees. Yeah. Yeah. Like an eight by ten crop there. Nice job, Tiffany. This is another one, boy. If the if the cardinals are difficult to photograph. The kingfishers are almost impossible. I chased one around for the better part of a summer and never got the shot of him that I really wanted. Yeah, this one obviously stood out to a lot of folks as we were going through just from the technical execution in terms of the sharpness, the exposure, and like you said, Scott, just the ability to catch this timing was, was incredible. Yeah. Look, you can still see, like he just came out of the water. You still got all the water droplets all over him. And it's sharp yeah. enough that I can see all that stuff lit up in the sun. Yep. Very nice. This was neat. Very low key image with just enough light to be able to see the town down here. 
And then the star, we've got like the Jupiter and, is it Jupiter and Mars? Jupiter and Neptune? But he says, very skittish mm -hmm. bird, hard to get close. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> the kingfishers are tough. Yeah, th this image I really enjoy from, you know, there, there's a lot of negative space going on here, but because mm -hmm. you maintain separation of the, the, the foreground or, or, or the, the curve of the mountains there with the sky, I think it works very nicely. Very nice mood image. And I like that there's just enough cloud cover that we've got this haze that really kind of lets the, the planets light up. Yeah. Neat, neat shot. Nice job, Tina. This one keeps playing tricks on me. Like, I'm not, like, the way that the, maybe it's a walkway between these two. I've never been to uh, the Hoover Dam. But it looks like maybe there's a walkway here, but it kind of lines up with back here and it all bleeds together. And like, it's just kind of a neat composition to line that up. And then my eye is not quite sure exactly what's going on. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I think the composition of this one works well. Um, and, yeah. you know, it, it draws you in. You got a nice, uh, ex the way the exposure was handled and the tones in the image, it, it really comes together nicely. Yeah, the tones are very nice. Some of these are like a, you know, a, a pleasant get your hot cocoa winter. And then some of these are like a Jack London to build a fire winter. And this like falls into the latter category. This is just plain old cold. It's a completely different feel I'm getting off of this one. Yeah. And here I thought this was technically very well done on a number of levels. You know, the exposure held together very well for what's a very difficult lighting situation with that much white in terms of not blowing something out, uh, maintaining detail, and just the depth you have. Um, you know, I think the, the, the use of depth of field worked well to keep enough of it in, because if too much of the background went out with how it is, it might be a little distracting. Yeah. Uh, but no, I, I think this was, I thought, very nicely done. Another great action shot. Yeah. Like, I don't think I've seen anybody else that's submitted a use of panning like this. We're really getting a sense of speed out of this one. Look at the snow streaming off the back of the skis. Yeah, you can tell she's moving and nicely done. Yeah. You know, I, this works with the composition to have her flying out of the frame because it adds to that feeling that this is just somebody who is moving. Very cool. I like the shot a lot. As a former ski racer, this one appeals to me on a, <laughs> on a personal level, but I like this a lot. Holy moly, is this a neat shot. I don't know if Kate is in the chat tonight, but I ran over, ran, in, ran over. No, <laughs> I happened to run into her over at the banana factory and I met her over there and holy mackerel, has she got some spectacular outdoor and wildlife photography. If you're not already following her, go check her stuff out. It's very, very cool. And this yeah. shot, man, oh man, I like this one. Yeah, this is obviously, you know, National Geographic or whatever you want to call it worthy with just having the, the, the owl looking back at you the way it is and the intense glare they have or, or, or just the look on their face. And those wings caught perfectly extended. Um, so many good things going on here, Kate. This is an absolutely wonderful image. Oh, for sure. And we got, and like the comments keep rolling in the shot. <laughs> Yeah, very, very cool. Jeff, definitely check out her stuff. She's got a ton more, and it's all spectacular. This is neat. This is like a farm field or maybe a frozen, probably a farm field, right? Yeah, and, and I think by now the folks joining us are getting an idea of the challenges we had. Um, as you said at the beginning, Scott, with just a, a really large number of beautifully done images. And you know, this, again, falls into that kind of calendar, Hallmark card you know, type of image where a lot of really well done elements to it. This one is such a unique shot. It's such a... Like the pose makes me want to Photoshop a football in there so it looks like he's going in for the field goal. I thought the same thing. <laughs> he probably would have done better than the, than the Eagles football team, actually. But you know. 
I can say that because I'm a fan. But a lot of great things here. I mean, obviously, combining the American flag with the Eagles, fantastic. I just wish, and I'm sure it was not possible, how quickly it's happening. A little more separation so that the mm. flag wasn't growing out of the Eagle. But, um, I mean, but, you know, nicely done. Yeah, that's it. Saw this Eagle as I was driving and took a quick U-turn. Yeah, <laughs> definitely go back for that shot. This is obviously someone who's a snowbird. <laughs> the only penguins or uh, flamingos we have around here now are plastic, and this one's obviously not. But uh, I thought this was an excellent image. The color is so striking, right? Like, and capturing that, and not letting it wash out, really worked out yeah. well. And, and just the eye and the, and the composition with the, the S curve from the neck and the curve. Back the, yeah, very nice. We've had a couple of ice photos, but I keep coming back to this one myself. I love the layers of stuff that's going on here, looking down through the ice and the way that the light is like lighting stuff up partially, but not completely. Yeah, this is another one that honestly, I hope, um, tiny enough, I can't quite see the name, but I, I hope this was printed out uh, and framed and, and displayed or done as a metallic canvas. I mean, this definitely has some pop to it and has some really rich tones All and shading lines. going on. Yeah. Yeah, very, very cool shot. Yep. The holly and the icing. Yeah, it doesn't get any more winter classic than that, does it? Yep. All you with holly trees in your backyards, you guys are cheating. But, you know, here again, I think it was a nicely done job with the composition, uh, holding the lighting together, um, you know, I, and I don't know again how much moving around there was to find just the right angle, but I think this works very well. Mm -hmm. If anything, I might have gone a little tighter on the aperture. I'm starting to lose. Like, I'd like to see some of these berries in focus. Mm. But other than that, I mean, yeah, nice job. Like, retaining those highlights on that ice, that's not, not easy. I like the story behind this one. Taken on uh, November 8th at Trexler Game Preserve. It says, I traveled all over the West trying to get a great photo like this, and the best one I got was right here. Yeah, I mean, the only thing that could really make that any better would be if it happened to be that day in December where we had the snow on the ground, and you would have had them covered with the with the, with the snow. But, oh, man. Yeah, but I mean, catching them up yeah. at the peak there, uh, at the crest mm -hmm. of that hill, um, you know, works very well. Composition's nicely done. Yeah. I might go in just a little tighter with the crop just to make them a little bigger in the frame. And then you could kind of rule a thirds him off to the left a little bit, but yeah. very nice. Oh, I like this. That's a lot of snow. <laughs> yeah. I think, you know, with the, it, it's a, this one I was a little torn on because it's almost too much snow. I think I would have mm -hmm. liked to have seen the horses a little better, but at the same time, obviously, that's going to be a difficult to control kind of scenario. Right. But what we have here, I think, is very well done with the composition. I like the way it's framed out. Um, you know, the horses stand out well in the in the. I was going to say barn. I don't know it's technically a barn, but you know, mm -hmm. I think it really sets a nice mood of a wintry photo. Yeah. There was a bunch of talk about this one. Like that's the perfect shot right there of this train. Nice line that kind of comes in from the corner, sweeps back around, draws you back into the train, framed between the two rock walls. Yeah, again, this to me is love the texture in the smoke. Yeah, and like we said about something, this is such a dramatic image. You know, so much good mm -hmm. going on with it. Great use of what's in focus, what's out of focus, and like you said, just you, you could. It almost has a three D feel to it because of the depth of the rocks and depths. Yeah, of the yeah. So, excellent. Oh, he's neat. Oh, that's nice and sharp, too. Look at how all of the little detail you can see in the feet. And kind of a line that comes through. Yeah, I don't know that I've seen really this type of image before. I think it works very well in terms of just conveying the strength of this bird. Yeah.
All right, so a whole bunch of our judges liked this one a lot. I think we've got to award this one our judge's choice. Yeah, there was a lot of uh, a lot of emails and chats back and forth around the company on uh, where to go with these, and uh, yeah, as we've said, several of them had a lot of a lot of interest. But this one, I think, for a few reasons, really ended up getting the most votes within the staff. Yeah, we got the pretty sure we're going for the Walker Evans reference here, right? That super famous photograph that he's got over looking out over South Bethlehem from what is it, St. Michael's Cemetery up there? I should know this. I live right in town. But I think this, to be honest, I like the composition of this one a little better. I love the layers, right, from the cemetery to the houses to the steel and the way those all fall in together. Yeah. And Being out there in the snow creates such a great atmosphere. Yeah, again, exposure was handled wonderfully for a black and white image. You know, it's technically very well executed in terms of maintaining uh, detail in your highlights and shadow areas and keeping such a great variety of tone through the image. Yeah, for sure. So, Glenn, we'll be in touch. We'll get yourself some gloves. Congratulations. Congratulations. Nice winding S curve coming back here through the snow. This is another one of those you got to get out there right after the snowfall to get the branches like that, right? Yeah, it definitely, definitely draws you down the path. Mm -hmm. The left look a little hot to you? Like, I feel like that's a little bright. I would want to burn that down a little bit. Yeah, you know, I, I couldn't tell if that if this had a flop going off or what lighting may be going on, but I agree that does pop a little more than probably would be ideal compared to yeah. the rest of the image. Like if that were a little darker and then maybe just lighten up the very center a little bit, it might pull my eye into the middle yep. a little more. But neat shot. Now this one looks like there's a flash going off over here on the left too, but I kind of like it. I like the, like catching the snow here and then these layers of like the different kinds of city lights. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, yeah. You know, I, I really liked the, the look of this image, I mean, it's, you know, probably more of a, a, a grab from a balcony of some type, I'm going to guess. Mm -hmm. uh, but I like the street lamp lighting up the tree there. Um, I agree. I think if you could have either canceled the flash or done something to not have the, the snowflakes on the left jump, it really would have given you more depth because then those mm -hmm. trees and that, I don't know if it's sun setting or what's going on, if it's, if it's city lights. I'm pretty sure that's like sodium vapors back there. We got different kinds of lights lighting things up. Okay. I know yeah. what. Um, yeah, I think if we had been able to turn the flash off for that, it would have really had a lot of depth going back over there. Mm. Definitely a good eye for that. Yeah. Okay, so there's a nice depth of field on this. I've got the, the snow is nice and sharp. I can see this nice detail up here in the leaves. Just a little bit of these berries here. Yep, nicely done. Oh, hey, look, it's Rebecca Kaczynski. Ah, Rebecca Kaczynski. Oh, hey, Rebecca. Hi, Rebecca. <laughs> Thanks for sending in a photo. For those of you not in the know, Rebecca used to work here at Dan's. She's a former coworker of ours, so nice to see her. Absolutely. That's neat. I like the square composition here. Oh, hey, she's here in the chat. Hello. Happy New Year. Yeah, this I thought was a very powerful image. I'm, again, I'm going to kind of go back to guessing not around here, at least not that I know of. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I agree. I think there's some, some really strong elements that pull you down the length of the image. And I like how you kind of have the, the, the difference between this, this hard concrete bridge off to your left and then these very textural natural yeah. trees off to the side with I'm yeah. assuming the sun kind of coming behind them but very nicely done yeah neat colors square was absolutely the right choice here yeah i've lost count of the cardinals now <laughs> who's keeping count i like it now this was nice exposure nice also Nice use of the, the white balance. I feel like the color in this one looks really good. 
yeah, it hit a lot of things very well. It's just a shame that that one um, one bit here, right? Yeah, boy, if that and obviously again with with birds like this, you you're very limited and, and you have to really move quick. But you know, again, like I said, it's got nicely done of capturing the bird itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just that that right there. But nice job, Gary. And the snow, like just frozen in the air there, really kind of sets the whole atmosphere. All right, well, I think that's it. I think we managed to do it all. <laughs> so thanks so much, everybody. Um, as you can see, we got a ton of great pick, 94 different entries and a ton of great work. These were a lot of fun to look through. We really enjoyed going through all these pictures. So. And yeah, the good news is, you know, as, as we kind of mentioned before the question of more photo contests, we actually have a lot of things coming up that we're working on for the winter yet. Uh, yep. I'll kind of tease a little thing. One, for those of you who've uh, followed us through the years, you may recall in uh, past years, we worked with um, some partners at uh, uh, Envision where we did some photo swaps. We actually have one of those that we're planning out and putting together to do a virtual photo swap uh, until we can get back to doing in-person photo swaps. So we definitely have much more coming in terms of, um, you know, events like these, sessions like these where we can connect with you and connect you to fellow photographers. We have lined up some guests for some future episodes that are some names you'll know from here in the Valley and some names you'll know from lands down under. So I promise you're going to have some really interesting items coming up over the next several weeks. So, you know, we certainly appreciate your taking time to join us today and hope you continue. And anytime you can't catch us live, please be sure to catch us on our YouTube channel. Yeah, for sure. All right. So for next time, we're going to do a Q&A episode. So send in your questions, either you can send them to us on Facebook, or you can send them to info at danscamera.com and say you've got a question for the photo show. Uh, however you get them to us, you know, strap it to a bird and throw it in our direction. But send us your questions and uh, we will go over your photography questions and uh, talk about some of the gadgets we've been using and uh, hope to keep it like, well, if, even if you just like happen to tune in live and ask a question in the chat and we'll go through all your questions and spend a little time with tips and tricks and uh, helping you get better pictures. All right. Absolutely. All right. So thanks so much. This was a lot of fun. Thank you for everybody uh, who came out to watch tonight. Uh, Joan asks, are you gonna, guys gonna post a recording? Yeah, you'll be able to go back to, we are streaming live to YouTube as well, and you'll always be able to go back to watch the stream again uh, whenever you'd like. Um, oh, thank you, Kathy. Cool. That's our goal. I'm glad you learned something. We've had fun. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. so. We will see you next time, same time next week, answering your questions, hanging out, talking about photography. Hope to see you then. Thank you, folks. Night, everybody.